a hood and decides to quote unquote rescue a dog from someone walking it. No wonder the Latin kings wanted to fucking kill him. The other thing that I remember about him was his bizarre relationship with Deborah the Cougar. Deborah had insanely low self-esteem. She would try to spack him away under gobs of eyeshadow, blush, foundation, serums, soaps, detanglers, demultipliers, and whatever other chemicals she could find to slather on her skin and body. Deborah was a trip for sure, but never deserved the abuse that she endured at the hands of this bizarre dude. I would come home many a night to witness him literally screaming at her, telling her she was spoiled, that she was a child, that she would never grow up. I did not understand it. I just thought that perhaps they were in some kind of bizarre, abusive relationship. The statements coming from him were compounded by his claims that he was adopted, abused, oppressed. He said he was adopted as a brown baby to make his parents look progressive or something. This despite the fact that he was more beige than brown and had Anglo-Saxon features. <laughs> despite the onslaught of prejudice and hardships, he became a hero of his time. And Butterscotch Boy graduated from three Ivy League schools with master's degrees, worked for Booz Allen Hamilton, and criticized Deborah, telling her she was shit and had been nothing. <laughs> of herself. I never knew this to be true. What I knew to be true was that Butter Boy was a complete fucking asshole. He picked on the easiest target. It was absolutely despicable. This pit bull whisperer was, day in and day out, abusing a woman of extremely low self-esteem. All of this culminated with Deborah banging on my door at all times of the night, asking me why he was so mean to her. I try and comfort her. Then I'd approach him, and he would rattle off something bizarre, like she was a child and stunted, and that he was trying to help her grow up. Oh, a real humanitarian. Then he would change the subject, assessing me, asking me about Jeremy, and saying he wanted to make an app based on my life. Whatever the fuck that meant. <laughs> and if there's one thing I'm familiar with involving psychology, it is projection. And it is beyond prevalent now, and I can spot it immediately. It was not Deborah who whined. It was him. It was not her who was a complete loser. It was him. Three master's degrees from Ivy League schools, and you're living in a fire hazard, camp pot smelling mingle experiment to stay out of debt, stealing pit bulls and running from the neighborhood gangs in order to be rehoused in a room smaller than a prison cell? There was something I didn't trust about this whole thing. He wanted to act like he was disadvantaged while taking advantage of others and it made me question everything about him. Needless to say, I was overjoyed when I noticed that he had been gone for several days and all of his clothes and stuff were left in the room. I looked through it and wondered if the Latin kings or whoever he stole the, the pit bull from had finally offed him. I was just glad he was gone. He did play my mind for a little while, though. I wondered how he'd ended up living in this shithole, and what the fuck he was doing on his computer all day and night in there, and where the fuck did he disappear to, leaving all his shitty clothes and Kevin Federline hats inside? <laughs>